TX isn't actually uh, an improved TI. Even though some of the parts seem fairly familiar, it's actually more of a baby S, and that's a really important distinction. I'll give an example. We were probably six, eight weeks into a very long development cycle where we're listening critically to everything, and, and we stopped being able to use the TIs as references. Normally we use, and we go back and forth religiously between say a TI and a TX, or before that a T and a TI. We wanna make sure that the nine is better than the older nine. And six weeks into this, we realized we, we can't do this anymore. We're not learning any from uh, anything from this. So we started using S510 as our working reference for all three models. And, and, and it was because the 510 is so fast and so transparent and so dynamic. And so, no, not one of the three were, were duplicates, of course, but it was what we had to do in order to get that, you know, something that was a useful uh, benchmark where we go, okay, this is what we're shooting for. We're not, we're done. The TI is toast. And, and that's hard to say because it was easily our most popular, most successful line in history. And I realized that, that what had always really eluded Brel was a line, not a single model that was, you know, occasionally successful, really an entry level line that had all the pieces of the puzzle where people felt really proud about owning it, not just having something that was affordable and made good base. Well, you know, we, we'd had so much early success with the, with the original R series that uh, I decided to push the envelope a little bit. And so I did this mid-century modern motif, the first T's, the T1, 2, 3, and, and, and they were a fascinating piece. So we, we developed some of the themes. We had an active driver and a passive, uh, but stylistically we used rails, uh, perimeter rails around the outer cabinet. And, and what that served to do was elevate it and get it up off the floor so the down firing driver had exactly the right distance off the floor. We still do those things today, uh, but we do them with, with solid billet and feet, right? You either loved them or you hated them. They were a huge success for REL. They, they took off and, and, and we sold many, many, many units. But it was just funny because you, you realize that, that if you're building something that half the people hate and the other half love, you're really ignoring the other half of the world. So then the second generation came out in 2010 and they were so hugely uh, positively received because they were much more conventional in their styling and their appearance. This is where you started to get into the classic form that we just got done with in the TIs, right? Of a more cubic dimension, you know, high gloss lacquers, billet feet, everything was, was sort of now of a piece in the modern rail era. And those were very, very successful, and we, and, and we carried those for five years up until 2015 when we launched the TIs. And the TIs were really a, a, a bridge beyond that. We didn't change a, a lot stylistically. We'd sort of sharpened our pens a little bit, got a little bit more clever in dimensions and, and all the final details. Uh, by then, I was much more confident in what I was doing with drivers, so we really hugely improved on the drivers. And the entire thing was a nice, clean, clear-cut move upward. And, and with TX now, what we're really doing is internally comparing ourselves to our own S's and the success we've had with those in the last couple of years. It, it really is uh, about a combination of virtues, right? On, on the one hand, um, the sound, particularly in two-channel, there are other people that do fine in theater. We, we, we have an amazing range in HT, and if, if what you want is a special effect, uh, rendered fast and loud by an HT. They're incredible value. Um, but, but there's something unique about what T's do because they allow you to have your cake and eat it too. Most subs ask you to make a decision, right? You're either playing louder than God home theater. And I get it. For, for some people, that's it. And that's why we created HT and it's fantastic and they can be used in tandem with TX. If you wanna have this and you wanna have unbelievable, really, really loud, uh, high pressure special effects, combine the two. But the TXs, um, that's the first place where you start to get the magic of the high level connection, the way RHEL does it, where, where we're bringing it in through a resistive matrix and, and everything, I can't get into too much detail, but everything that we do in that high level filter that lets you have a perfect seamless match with your main speakers. So early on in that development process, um, we came across a magical amplifier manufacturer. These people are so good and so nice and they listened to everything we wanted to do. 
and uh, we, 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 we gave them our designs, uh, they produced them to a relatively low standard, and we went through and said, okay, this isn't, this isn't how we build amps, and, and, and basically tripled the size of the power supplies, uh, it, it improved every key part in it, put in beautiful glass fiber boards that were like telecommunications grade, did the whole business, and, and we wound up with the original T's. So we've used this manufacturer and this style of amplifier, this basic starting point, for well over 15 years now. And, and they are so well constructed and such high value. I wasn't willing to, to move away from those amps. We have, we have uh, affordable Class D amps that we use in, in other models, and they're really good. But for some reason, these have a certain magic to them, and they work so well for so long, and are, and are also really easily rebuilt. When something ever does happen, you can work on these boards. So, if, if you want to get better, but you can't change out the amplifier, what do you do? How do we make it even, for example, play louder or be more dynamic? And, and literally, the only thing you can really do is, is make the cabinet volume that you're working within a little bigger. And so we did. But of course, it, it's like pulling on a little stray piece of thread. You, 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 uh, oh yeah. So our cabinet factory built beautiful cabinets exactly to our designs. <laughs> and we're off and running. Because once you do that, you, you have to completely re-engineer the drivers, right? All of a sudden you get a larger internal volume. How do you deal with that? Well, you have to drop the cue. So you change the surround and you start to hear that now we've got so much travel that the spider isn't keeping up and literally you're starting to get yawing in the voice call. So now you have to go back through. It took us like five different generations of spider just to get the driver to stay in itself. And, and, and every part of it worked that way. We're really, really uh, proud of these TXs. You know, honestly, every time we start down one of these paths, you start off going, okay, exactly how am I going to keep what we do properly intact and, and do something more, right? And, and for us, the, the, the goal is always to get better at everything. We're not just trying to make it louder, for example. And the really cool thing to me about X is, uh, is how much better it is at everything that matters than I, and, and I would not have bet you that that was possible a year and a half ago. That, that to me is the real breakthrough for X, is that we've managed to just sort of elevate everything.